Here we are again. Hello and welcome. Well, we've got a little bit of a different video going on today. Yeah. It's going to be a little bit of a debate, really, isn't yeah. it? Controversy as well. Yeah. As you can see, we've got a selection of flash carts in front of us here, all for retro systems. Um, yeah, we've had a bit of fun history with flash carts on the site, haven't we? Because we've <laughs> given them coverage before. Yeah. And um, it's been rightly been pointed out that that kind of contravenes some of the rules we've got about mm -hmm. talk about ROMs and piracy and stuff, and uh, we are in the position we are in sort of at the moment point in time where we're maybe reevaluating that a little bit because yeah. I think for some for, for for a lot of gamers myself included these devices are fascinating and they're things that as you can see we've got a lot of but yeah I think the controversy on the site as we kind of block it. I'll try to yeah. ban it as a whole, whereas maybe what we're trying to do is stop people linking to dodgy things yeah. that were like hacking, yeah. Yeah. distributing DS, DS ROMs. And which, we, which we're totally don't agree gem. with. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, these, these are all like these are, kind of. Exactly, these are all for very old systems. So the format of this video really is we're going to have a little discussion for or against flash carts. Um, I mean, I don't think either of us have got strong opinions either way, but it's not no. fun to play devil's advocate, really, in this yeah. situation. I mean, I mean, I'll kick things off with saying that I think that flash carts, you know, despite their sort of maybe legally dubious background, are something that are really appealing to me. Mm. Um, because as a gamer, I've already got quite a large collection. It's almost a convenience thing, really, more than anything else, being able to have... You know, one cart you slot in, yeah. and you know you put a card in, and then you've got access to all the games that you want to play. Obviously, there's also the issue of licensing, whereas a lot of games now aren't available on any channel to buy mm. apart from second hand, and certainly on machines like the N64 and on the SNES as well. The really desirable games now are going for astronomical prices. You know, yeah. way more than the cost. I mean, these car carts are quite expensive because they're, be they're bespoke pieces of hardware. You know, and they're made on very small scale but even compared to that you know stuff like Conker's Bad Fur Day on the N64 is you know hundreds no. of pounds or dollars and examples like that there is no it's not like Nintendo or Rare gets any money when someone no. buys it on eBay and well, there's no this is a thing way to yeah. buy them on Nintendo systems I mean so yes yeah, playing playing the against argument a little bit there I suppose <laughs> you could say that when you buy a second hand game, at least you're giving money to somebody who is then going to put that back into the industry, I suppose, you could yeah, argue. But I can sense we're gonna end up swapping roles a lot on this title. Well, yeah. <laughs> they might use that money to you know Whereas a copied buy game. -game yes, yeah, yeah. That. Well that's true. A copied game gets goes no money goes anywhere, does it? Yeah. But um yeah, I mean at a point I, th I mean we've talked about this a lot in the office, haven't we saying like you know the the point that I I kind of make about this for, for these devices is that the kind of people that own them are people like me, who mm. have poured thousands and thousands of pounds into the industry over the past twenty five years already. Not that that's an excuse to just you know distribute stuff illegally. Yeah. But I've got a massive collection of games at my house, and they're all they're just everywhere, and it's kind of like this is a way of adding a little like I say a little air of convenience to my mm. gaming rather than having to grab everything out of the loft or wherever I suppose that's another another thing I, I mean, I, my, my point is that the people that maybe buy these devices because they're quite expensive they're not mm. the kind of people who haven't bought ever bought a game in their life they're kind of enthusiasts yeah I, I mean the flip side is that these promote ROMs you download online and naturally a lot of people just I say a lot of people it might not be a lot of people but some people just download them to run in emulators on PC, yeah. So they're not even kind of supporting this little yeah. sub yeah. set yeah. of the retro industry. So, you know, the ROMs can be used for this kind of purpose or yeah. something a bit lazier. I mean, I suppose the good thing about these is at least they do require you to have the original hardware. Yeah, there's that. There's certainly less iffy, I mm -hmm. guess, in my in my mind than yeah. People just running a ton of emulators. Yeah. Them. PC. Yeah, I mean, like I say, it speaks a lot about the people who buy these kind of things. Yeah. That they want the authentic experience. They want the original hardware. They want the original controllers, um, and possibly, you know, maybe they've looked at the price of some second-hand games and just thought, look, I can't afford that. Mm. Those games aren't available digitally. I mean, what we should what we should always stress is that you should always support Nintendo, Sega, 
Microsoft, Sony, whoever, you should if if they're giving you the a legal avenue to purchase that game, then yeah. you should always support it because if you don't, then they're never going to do it in the future. Well, then yeah, maybe that's part of the problem is sort of yeah you you might target their games or import games or whatever with these kind of devices, but there's a danger that there's a majority or certainly a large number of people use ROMs and maybe these to avoid spending yeah. five dollars on an NES yeah, I mean, that's game on the virtual console because people yeah. are forever complaining about Nintendo's pricing. Yeah, I, I th but I'd, I'd, I mean, I'd say I don't think there's many people that do that because if you're gonna, mm. if you're too cheap to spend five dollars or whatever, mm. you're not gonna drop. I mean, some of these are hundreds and hundreds of pounds worth of flash cart. I mean, yeah. the, the SNES one I think is that's over a hundred pounds, mm. which in dollars is even more than that. You know, it's it, so I don't think this this is the cheap way out mm. necessarily. Um, yeah, I mean, it is an odd situation because I think your average pirate or your average, you know, sort of traditionally, even going way back to like the eight bit or sixteen bit days, mm -hmm. the idea of people like exchanging floppy disks or tapes in the playground for like the Amiga and Spectrum yeah. was just <laughs> they hadn't got the money, so they were just completely avoiding spending it. Whereas with this, you have you, the outlay initially is quite a lot. Plus, you've got the original hardware, so if you factor all of that in. It's not really the cheapest way of going about it, but I mean, it's it's probably it's ironically harder to be a pirate now. Because I remember, and I'll happily admit to it, I don't think I'm going to get locked uh, up uh, now. Uh, right, okay, I'll just get the police. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> when I was very young, we had a ZX Spectrum, which is, I guess, like the Commodore. If you're yeah, not in the UK. If you're not watching American uh, listeners, but, yeah, um, like viewers. We had like this plastic beefcase thing, just yeah. full of tapes. Yeah, and none of them were. Purchase no copies, so I think that was part we, we of the did course. Have quite a lot yeah. of legal games, but yeah, yeah, it was really common back then. Oh, God. I, in I, my I, era to easily copy tapes. So yeah, I guess Nintendo were one of the first to really knuckle down on it. Yeah, I suppose Atari did with their cartridges. But uh, but, well, piracy NES. piracy wasn't a thing that even existed when Atari were. Yeah, around, was it? I suppose. It, but I suppose with the NES and onwards with these sort of spoke cartridges yeah. so they couldn't be copied back yeah. then. I mean I, I remember the days of the Commodore Amiga and friends coming into school with hmm. little floppy disk cases, ten discs all copied. Yeah. I mean I, I, li I literally <laughs> know people who had Amigas and never bought a single game for like, the entirety of owning the machine. Terrible. Which goes to show how bad it was. I mean I think consoles were kind of like the industry's way of fighting back against that. Because hmm. you, you know obviously you could copy cartridges back in the 90s but it wasn't it was an expensive process. Yeah, but um, yeah, I mean, I think to sort of flip to the side, maybe supporting these things is that the likes of Nintendo and Sony are starting to do it. Obviously, with more with PS One stuff, but you get you get the idea that these companies need to do a better job. Yes, yeah, with their virtual consoles. Definitely. I think Nintendo did a good job with the Wii Virtual Console. Yeah. You look at it now. Yeah. The library is ridiculous, and there's all these really, retro yeah. systems that yep. Mega Drive and there's, even there's the arcade. Uh, I don't think they did Atari, but arcades. Arcades, stuff. yeah, yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure there was Commodore sixty four. There was Commodore sixty four very briefly. Yeah, um, was, yeah. So that was a really good service. So they just need to catch up now. Um, but the trouble is, it's because maybe they go for too much quality with all their manuals yeah. and suspend points. It's taking things. them longer. Um, and we were talking about this earlier, and I said another thing that sort of puts you off things like the virtual console in Nintendo's case is I've got like a few hundred quids worth of mm. virtual console stuff probably on my Wii. But the transfer if your Wii thing gets is so stolen, then you've lost well, that. And the you? transfer process yeah. annoyed me to the point I didn't do it. So yeah. I've got like I've got no, an that, unplugged Wii. That's a very good with point. A lot of content that's on a very it, good point. I mean, we it put, should be more natural and easy, and this kind of stuff kind of taps into exactly. convenience. Because at the end of the day, you can get, you know, whether well, this is a good or bad thing, you can get hold of these ROMs like mm. that without. Yeah. So you, there's not that fear that if your machine dies or gets stolen, you're losing all of that. I mean that. That's another thing. I, th I mean, I do agree with that a little bit. It's kind of like what stops me wanting to invest all this money into these digital platforms is that what happens in five years' time when mm. that console becomes obsolete? And we've already seen that Nintendo aren't getting all of their retro stuff onto the Wii 
you as quickly as it could be. No. It's the same thing with the, I mean, you know, the, the, the Xbox 360, there's stuff on on my Xbox like Radiant Silver Gun and Guardian Heroes. Mm. They're all left in the past now. Unless Microsoft decides to push them up to the Xbox One, I'm not going to be able to play them again. And it's kind of like, I think ROMs in a little way and like these kind of devices, they're, they're liberating, they're, they're letting us experience a past that m is actually at risk of sort of fading away because the mm. manufacturers don't see any value in allowing us to continually get access to it. So it's almost like, it does feel like it's a little bit of a, of a sort of resistance against that kind of, the manu yeah. manufacturer's reluctance to do that. But um, I mean, the remarkable thing about all of these, I mean, every single one of these devices that you've got, we've got on, in all these machines comes from the same guy. <laughs> uh, he's based in- Even like, the Game Boy one. Yeah, the Game Boy one. Yeah, you, see, you can't really got to see it on the back, yeah, but there is a little, a little cartridge on the back there. They're all from the same guy, and what happens is he then uh, makes the boards available and stores uh, around the world, like um, Stone Age Gamer, who have done the EverDrive 64 and the EverDrive N8 there, which is the NES one, which um, we've not actually taken out of its wrapping yet because our NES hasn't arrived yet. We're expecting a NES to arrive fairly soon that we'll be doing a video of because um, it's on like a custom-painted NES. He, th this guy produces them all, and these stores put them into the cases and put their labels on. But it is very much like a cottage industry. It's this one guy producing these, so it's not like he's mass producing them and mm. making a small fortune out of it. It's very much aimed at the enthusiast. Yeah, it's not. These aren't being pushed out into stores. They're not. You know, they're not. I would imagine the financial impact on any of these companies that produce the original hardware is just completely insignificant. Yeah, I um, think. Um Obviously, you, you get into grey territory when it's when they're games that are on. Yeah. Current. Download yeah, that stores. is that is the thing. And, the yeah, and it's and it's impossible to avoid. People are, you know, people might say, "I'm going to purchase this for homebrew. I'm going to purchase this just to play this game, which isn't mm. available anymore." You can't. It's almost inevitable that they're going to put other games on there. That you know, mm. they're not going to sit there and think, "Right, I'll spend a fiver on that, on the Wii U when mm. I can get it for free on this hardware because I've got this flash cart now." Um, so is there are some dodgy areas. I mean, I, I'm probably the typical owner of a flash cart and I must have something wrong with me because even though I can ha have access to the ROMs, I'm still buying the original games in their yeah. original packaging because that's part of the appeal for me. I like having the original package and I like having the game, even if it just gets bought and then put on a shelf and just gathers dust. I like the fact that I've got the original game. Um, so it is, I'm probably not, a, I don't know whether I'm a typical flash cart owner. Yeah. I mean, for you looking in, I mean, like, yeah, you've never I owned a flash. You've any. never bought no. any of these things. So, do you see it as a little bit of an odd situation? Or? I mean, I was surprised when you were seeing how expensive they are. Um, mm. So, I think from that perspective, uh, they're pretty, they're relatively harmless because you say that's sold hardware anyway. Yeah. And yeah, you'd have to be sort of very serious about yeah. this to yeah. want to buy one of these. I guess yeah. the trouble is that they house a format that's sort of rampantly pirated elsewhere yeah. and not used for these devices. Yeah. In a perfect world where money's no object, they'd have their own thing they do to files. Yeah. They'd produce their own library. Yeah. And there was somewhere they could... Proprietary yeah. ROMs somewhere yeah. that are locked up and that but then didn't probably have anything that no was one on would, sale elsewhere. No one would buy that but flash cart though. Then, yeah, that's the, that's the thing, <laughs> that cats out of the bag. So yeah. I mean, the, the, cost is, the cost issue is like fascinating. Cause I mean, like some of these... There's a few of these. I think it's the SNES one, the PC Engine one, which is just a circuit board, the Famicom mm. and the Game Boy. These all come from um, retro towers in the UK. Again, it's the, the, the actual internal hardware is produced by this same guy over in, um, I think his name's Igor. I think it's, how do you pronounce that? Chris? Chris? Crix? Who knows? We're going to get, we're gonna get <laughs> savage for not being able to say that. Yeah. But he's the guy who produces them, and then these other stores make them. But yeah... I, the cost is is astronomical, and um, that's that's mm. one of the key considerations. That's what one of the things that makes me think this isn't really the quick and easy way out. That yeah. a lot of people who are anti piracy would say, you know, don't you don't support these things, but they are kind of still feeding into that enthusiast market because there's not many people that are going to drop over a hundred pounds on a piece like that when they could mm. just as easily go right. I'll just play it on my PC. You know, the, 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 these are aimed at certain people 
who perhaps want to protect their investment by because obviously you know every time you put a cartridge in and out of a machine you're yeah. effectively reducing its lifespan and batteries die and cell yeah. data like well that's that. another thing yeah that's another I mean some of these you can see in the back of this I'm on the Game Boy one there's actually batteries in, in the cartridge mm. which which are like there for sort of um, I think on the Game Boy one it lets you play because Pokemon yeah, that's right, came with top. a yeah Pokemon came with a day and night cycle yeah. And that's why Pokemon cartridges run out of batteries quicker because it's it's constantly keeping that day and night cycle going. Whereas a lot of other games only use the battery to maintain that save data. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean you've got uh, yeah the, the thing about battery backup is an important point to raise I think mm -hmm. because um, these devices allow you to create new save states on uh, you know ex uh, media like SD cards, which are going to last longer than your batteries. So I suppose you know there would be people who sat there who've got you know all these amazing RPGs on the snares or whatever sitting on the shelf and they're losing value as the battery mm -hmm. starts to die and then the value goes unless you're willing to open that cartridge up and replace that battery which is a bit of a faff mm -hmm. then you know th this is a way of perhaps getting around that I think one thing to maybe point out as well we've seen a pretty obvious trend with Wii U and 3DS just sticking on Nintendo side where they're They've been scaling back, I think, quite a lot, particularly on 3DS, on virtual console content as a whole. Yeah, I think yeah. they're just not diverting the same resource. Maybe yeah. it just didn't pay off. No, I mean, the, the on stuff the on Wii, I sales noticed, just weren't what they expected, maybe. I noticed Game Boy games are literally, they're not out, they're not on the 3DS yeah, at all now. But monochrome ones, colour ones are, but yeah. see, there's loads of great monochrome Game Boy games mm. on the play. And it just doesn't look like they're going to be doing it anymore. I guess with the few they do release, there's that sense of quality. Like the Game Boy Advance ones are cool because they have the yeah. sort of scanned manuals and Earthbound came with. Was it yeah. like a guide? I think it was, yeah. Like I, I bought guide. that recently, I need to look. But yeah. I, I mean, get, absolutely. So they're trying to add their own value, but. And you should support lot, that whenever you can, definitely. Yeah, and yeah. they're being very picky. Yeah. I think now they're not just putting everything up unless it's called Urban Champion for some reason. They, they love Urban Champion, don't they? they you do. like Urban Champion, don't you? I've heard. Yeah. He doesn't. I'm only joking. Um, Worst game ever. I suppose the Possibly. other... Looking to the future, yeah. um, I suppose it's almost unrealistic to expect companies like Nintendo and Sega, uh, Microsoft, Sony, mm. they're not going to be supporting these formats in terms of re-releases till mm. the end of time. There is going to be a point where they'll say no one's interested and they'll stop. I assume that will happen. I'm not sure it might not. I mean, they're still releasing Atari well, 2600 yeah. clone consoles. It's already happening a bit, Sigurds. Yeah, uh, I mean, like... Dragging its heels yeah. on the, the latest 3D classics. Yeah, uh, sales yeah. Sales there, so it's kind of... Yeah. It's already happening. So, I mean, th th then these kind of devices... Mm. Uh, and also you've got the fact that the original cartridges aren't going to last forever. Yeah. What happens then? You know, 50 years' time, assuming this hardware still works... Mm. How are we going to get access to all these games? You know, what? How is it going to be? Are we going to rely on stuff like this, or is it going to be purely emulation? Or mm. that's that's the, that. I mean, I wouldn't say that keeps me up at night, but you know, it's it's a thing that I think about because you know we're not always going to be offered the chance to play these games. And unlike movies and music and books, video gaming doesn't seem to be an in, uh, an industry which is particularly good at preserving its past. No. Like most, you know, most real classic movies mm. are going to be available on DVD, VHS, YouTube, wherever. At some point, there is a way of getting them. Mm. Whereas with games, it's kind of, um, you know, stuff like picking an example, GoldenEye on the N sixty four. That's yeah. likely to remain in licensing purgatory forever. It's never ever going to come out because you'll never get the companies that are the licensees to to agree to release it. I mean, there was a mm. the whole thing. It was meant to be coming out on. On the 360, wasn't it? It's a yeah, HD, I heard and that. that I mean, it was you know, it's am I'm amazed it even went into development because you know it was almost like a, a dead cert. It wasn't going to come out, but there's a lot of games that are going to be impacted like that. And um, as time goes on, the cost of the physical cartridge is going to rise. The original cartridges, mm -hmm. they, the the cartridges are going to start failing. Um, we've already seen that clone hardware can be produced, like the Retron Five can be reduced produced to run these games yeah so there's a chance in 50 years time instead of the original hardware which probably will also fail as well you'll have a clone machi machine yeah you know what way you're going to have a play in those games i think we're going to find that stuff like this becomes even more of a i think it'd be thing. good if you know 10 15 20 years from now if 
Nintendo, Sega, all these publishers that are still around, sort of say, right, we're not going to try selling these really old ones Make them public domain. Be, yeah. Yeah, which I suppose is what happens with other mediums, isn't it? Like yeah. Films and music. So I was reading a thing, there's, I think, National Congress in America discovered Duke Nukem on PSP. Yeah, that's... that's um, but the point was, they're, they're preserving... Yeah. ...bombs, basically. Yeah. Games that I think that's very, very they're important. They're preserving the ROM and then they're making a physical copy on a yeah. disc. Um, I think that's vital, really. So it's happening anyway, so it'd be kind of good if there was an official resource where they were essentially public domain. Yeah. But it had the blessing of the big companies so people yeah. didn't have to feel a bit iffy. iffy Dirty doing it. about it. <laughs> yeah. So if like you did all say, those years ago with those spectrum. I know. I, know. <laughs> I can see so it's still intent, clearly playing on your mind, isn't it? Because 15, 20 <laughs> years from now, they can't still be selling NES games on the, the Wii U 3 yeah. or whatever. Let's uh, not even get into what the... Let's I was going to say Wii U 2, but <laughs> yeah. no. No, I don't think we'll want another do one called Wii U. Will we uh, after no, the Wii? probably not. <laughs> But yeah, they're not going to still be selling stuff for five no, bucks in no. 10, 15 You'd hope years. not. I mean, this is... they're pushing, arguably pushing their luck now. I think they are, definitely. With the pricing. Yeah. So um, it'd be good if they just said, right, you know what, let's... Let's make it all These games are old enough. Yeah. And they were all sort of not these... Because I imagine some of the bombs can be a bit iffy you find as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, because yeah, yeah, that, yeah, just kind of a lot of their hands and say fair enough. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's another thing that, that that doesn't give the emulation scene a good name. It's that a lot mm. of the places when you tend to get ROMs from are very dodgy looking sites. <laughs> so uh, you know, that, mm. but yeah, if there was a degree of legitimacy and all they said like you know these are now public domain, all these yeah. are free to distribute. I can't see Nintendo ever doing that because I think it, in Nintendo's case, um, whether or not you think it's justified in trying to charge five books or quid for an old game mm. that is very much the fabric of what Nintendo is about that those characters and the, that IP is is essential and that's one of the reasons why mm. I don't think they'll ever make games for smartphones but that's a different subject you know it, it, their IP is is king but yeah I mean like there's some companies you know there's games out there now where the publisher's not even around anymore like yeah. Acclaim and Toy HQ and all this kind of stuff you know what harm is there to mm. just say right this ROM is now because I think isn't it good old games on PC where that happens a lot now. They're distributing a lot of PC games completely royal. You don't charge for it, it's just freeware. Yeah, yeah. So they could do that with console ROMs. And yeah. I, I suppose it just it's just lacking anybody. And there's no company to actually say, yep, yeah, you can do that yeah. because these companies aren't around anymore. There will be a point where it will be completely legal as well to give them away for free. I don't know what the how many years it is for it's usually games. With books, it's 70, 70, years. right, okay. So after that time, people copyright's different, though, isn't it? Isn't copyright mm. twenty five years? But it's different. Public domain's different, I think, isn't it? Maybe because there was a thing about someone said that Super Mario Brothers on the NES should actually technically be public do- domain. Yeah, it might be. But Nintendo keep renewing the you know the copyright on it because obviously they want to protect mm. it. So well, certainly with books older than 70, yeah. 77 years, I think it is. Anyone, so you could take classic like Dracula or something. Yeah, and. You can distribute that for free, free and yeah. no one can touch you. The yeah. only time it becomes illegal is if you try and sell. Charge it. price, yeah, tra- yeah. So that's that's why the ebook files. Mm. I think it's a site called Gutenberg, yeah. and there's all these books for free that people have made themselves. Yeah. So, you know, well, yeah. eventually they're not going to have a leg to stand on anyway. Will anybody want to play a game with buttons in another forty years? Do you think? Won't we all be like think- controlling it with our minds and stuff like that? <laughs> You know. Well, who knows? I, th- I think there'll always be buttons. I think people get carried away. Oh yeah, I do. I was they, they just being they deliberately watch, they watch too there. much, you know, <laughs> too much Star Trek and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, there'll always be buttons. I'm not sure it'd be futuristic enough where you're playing retro Connect. games with your mind. Yeah. Jump. We've seen how well Connect's done. So. Left, Dragon Punch. You just have a, to think it. That's a while away. Yeah. So yeah, I don't I don't know whether we really came up with a definitive answer on that. No, it's because it's so fuzzy and green. Yeah, yeah. An area. I think the fact that these are very f- sort of enthusiast level products yeah. means that I don't think you can ever sort of really decry it as piracy. It's not piracy in the same way as just dumping it on your PC. Yeah. But yeah, I can imagine that it does annoy some of the uh, sort of probably does annoy some certain companies mm. knowing that people can play these things without actually spending any money but mm. then again do you know does Sega really care about it's mega, the Mega Drive anymore it's you know no. 
you know, you could awesome. argue that Nintendo doesn't really care about its older platforms. It's you know, it it it's could be it could be re anyway. it could be re releasing these consoles. It could be re releasing the SNES mm. as a smaller unit that sex ca- sex cartridges and stuff. You know, and stuff like NEC. They, they then mm. they're never going to go back to the PC engine. So you kind of say what what's wrong with fans sort of pulling a bit of power back and saying, look, we're gonna mm-hmm. we're gonna give our hobby a little bit more life by creating hardware, ingenious hardware that allows us to run these things, you know, forever. Yeah, I'd not say, be limited by I'd say if you want to play a lot of ROMs and feel less guilty about it. As soon as you download pay, a ROM, buy the game pay, on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> well there's that. Or buy something like this and play it on the original hardware. Yeah. At least that way yeah. you're there's definitely something to be said for playing on the Because the laziest hardware. thing is to download a thousand ROMs onto your PC. Yeah. And, and you're not and getting the original the experience. You're not get, I mean, with this, you're guaranteed to get it as the game was meant to appear, yeah. and you're playing it on the hardware it's meant to be on. Whereas on an on a emulator, you can't guarantee the speed's right, mm. frame skip get, comes into play, there's incompatibility. No emulator is 100% perfect. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, we're not really sure. Yeah. <laughs> The verdict is... Do what you want. You know, yeah, okay, don't let us say anything. But anyway, thanks for watching this rambling video. And uh, let us know if you'd like us to do more stuff like this. This is a little bit of a departure for us. Yeah. We've not really done anything like this before. Mm -hmm. But um, if you like our hairy faces and you want to see more of them, then uh, let us know by leaving a comment. See you later. See ya.